Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is the KG Made Suppressors EOS 1022 Integrally Suppressed Ruger 1022 Barrel. The name is a mouthful, but uh, uh, in short, now just, you know, I granted this is the beginning of the review, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now this thing is awesome, and I'll spend the rest of the video telling you why. Uh, first things first, a suppressed 22 is probably one of the uh, guns, be it the suppressor or uh, integrally suppressed like this is, that's most likely to put a smile on your face when you shoot it. For most people, it wouldn't have a necessarily practical purpose, uh, they, or they may use it for varmint control, or in law enforcement, you see them sometimes for taking out lights and stuff like that. Uh, but the 22, when you suppress it, is going to be super quiet, because it's it's not the, the loudest round to begin with. Even your supersonic 22 long rifles, you can get away with shooting those if they have a sufficient barrel length, uh, crown barrels and so forth without needing to suppress them at all. But a suppressed 22 brings quiet to a whole new level, to sometimes almost a pellet gun level. Um, everyone should, if they're, if they're allowed to, if their state allows it, unfortunately, uh, have at least one suppressed 22 in their life. Now the Ruger 1022 is probably the most venerable 22 caliber long rifle platform on the market. It's been around for a long time. It's gonna be around for a long time. And there's no good reason not to throw one of these barrels in it because it makes the world a much happier place when it comes to shooting suppressed 22. Uh, getting right into it, uh, KG is actually local to me. I'm in Atlanta. KG's in the Marietta area, and I heard about him through Robbie at Ackworth Guns up there in Ackworth, and he told him I should check him out. Uh, went by the shop, checked it out. Really impressive operation and some really impressive engineering that's going into this EOS barrel, which we're going to get into. Uh, but I like the fact that, hey, it's American engineering, American ingenuity uh, reapplied to a topic that doesn't get in a whole lot of attention from a lot of suppressor companies. A lot of suppressor companies make 22 cans or even uh, drop in 22 barrels for the 1022 platform, but I like the way that KG went about the rationality behind their design versus some of the other designs I've seen on the market. Now, I'm not saying those other designs are bad. I'm saying K and G did something, KG did something that's just a little bit different, uh, and I think that their justification for why they did it and their mindset they went into is probably more thought than a lot of people have put into a 22 caliber suppressor in a long time. Now, the, uh, the EOS 22 design consists of three parts. It's got this end cap, which I'm removing right now. Go ahead and get that off, get it out of the way. And then there's the barrel sleeve. Bear with me, this thing's 2,000 rounds dirty. <clears throat> That was really on there. And then there's the barrel itself, which is 3.8 inches of rifled barrel, and then it continues all, all uh, milled out of the exact the same piece, same bar stock, or barrel stock rather, uh, into the monocore design. Now, some people might say like 3.8 inches isn't really long. Well, the idea behind this was to make a rifle platform, the 1022 platform, as quiet as they possibly could while still maintaining a pretty decent degree of accuracy for that 22 caliber long rifle round. The monocore design is is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm sure you've seen something similar to it before because most monocores look more or less the same. With the multi-chamber design, there, it allows it to reduce the pressure as the round leaves the barrel in such a significant way that a significant way that even supersonic rounds like your 1,200 feet per second right around in that neighborhood rounds come out subsonic. So even and I'll show you even shooting. Um, Various types of ammunition, both supersonic and then into subsonic, it's super, super quiet. It's hard to really appreciate just how quiet this thing is on a video, but I think you can kind of get a feel for it just in the sound that you're able to hear compared to the sound of my voice and the sound of ambient noise and whatnot, that the EOS 22 is pretty damn quiet. For those of you that need it, the barrel is full auto rated, which a uh, open bolt 1022 in full auto is super fun. Uh, granted, unfortunately, due to the nature of the NFA laws, it's very hard for you to come by one of those, but if you have one, this is a barrel you need, especially if you want to be suppressed. Uh, it is a direct replacement for 1022 barrels as long as the stock that you're using accepts a .920 diameter uh, barrel. You'll be good to go. Just take the barrel off and put this one on, and it would, if it's 16 inch length, uh, it's going to give you a one stamp gun. Even though this is just a review of the EOS 22 barrel, uh, obviously I wasn't reviewing the entire firearm because it's specifically the EOS 22 replacement barrel, drop-in, integrally suppressed barrel. Uh, I still put 2,000 rounds of ammunition through it because it is a firearm-related component. In fact, it's directly related to firing a firearm because the bullets go through it. It's the barrel. Uh, but I still did my 2,000 round review process. For one of the first things I did after I got kind of a feel for it, after I put a couple hundred rounds through it, is I went ahead and did my normal 500 round burn down. During this burn down process, I shot half 
uh, your traditional lead, soft lead ammunition that you find in 22 long rifle, and then the rest of it was copper jacketed uh, CCI, whatever I could get my hands on. Uh, at least right when I was buying ammunition for the review process, 22 ammo was still pretty, pretty plentiful, and hopefully it remains that way because I plan on shooting the hell out of this thing in the, in the future just because it's so fun. Uh, but here's a look at the burn down. You know, when you're a kid and you go to the state fair and they got that booth with the BB gun that's a Tommy gun and you got to shoot out the red star and you got to get all of it. Uh, otherwise, you can't win the teddy bear and the booth's run by that guy that looks like Joe Dirt. And no matter how many times you try, you just can't get it. Well, I think I got a pretty good shot of getting that red star today. Well, I guess I don't get the teddy bear this time either. All right, after the burn down, took the EOS home, let it cool, swapped out the optic because I wanted to put the one to four on it, but let's see what condition our monocore is in. Ugh. Now it's a good idea uh, when you're shooting this thing, every 100 rounds or so, loosen up the sleeve just so it doesn't bond to the monocore because that's definitely a risk you have with this particular type of design. Not a huge deal if you just remember, hey, every 100 rounds or so I'm going to loosen that end cap, kind of twist the sleeve around and make sure it doesn't seize up on you because if it does, removal is going to be, well, problematic. As you can see now, I am having a little bit of a problem just because of all the carbon and lead. Uh, half of the rounds fired during the burn down were solid lead, which with 22 you can still find pretty easily, although it is getting a little harder. The copper jacketed are definitely better, but usually a little bit more expensive. Oh man, it is dirty in there. Give you guys a closer look. I made it through the burn down, obviously without any barrel related issues in the gun. And even though it got super, super hot uh, for that 500 rounds, it still remained quiet. It still remained hearing safe, which uh, again, it is a 22, but you can get 22s, to, especially if the, the shorter pistol lengths outside of that hearing safe range. So uh, no damage to the monocore, no damage to the sleeve, no damage to the end cap. It just kept running and running and running. Uh, as long as I kept the uh, 1022 sufficiently lubricated during the review process, I hadn't had zero issues at all as long as it was lubricated. I mean, I had some failures to feed every now and then because 22s can be finicky. And those 110 round drum mags, those... Uh, uh, GSG 110 round drum mags are notoriously finicky on uh, certain types of ammunition so that was kind of a letdown. I wanted to be able to burn through 110 round drums just all day long uh, but those magazines just don't really work as well as I'd like them to with every single type of ammunition. That's pretty common for 1022s. Uh, now next thing we get into is accuracy. How accurate is a 3.8 inch barrel uh, with a monocore suppressor really going to be? Well I did not do an initial accuracy check besides zeroing, which I didn't film, so I'm not even gonna talk about it because you can't see it. But what I will do right now is show you a five round group at 100 meters after 
2,000 rounds have been fired through the EOS 22 barrel and it has not been cleaned. If you are a 22 aficionado, uh, that should be impressive. It's definitely impressive to me. Uh, I have uh, 22 pistols with longer barrels that don't shoot as well. Granted, it isn't a rifle configuration, so it's a little easier to control, uh, and I did bench it. Uh, I didn't vice it down, but I did lay it across the top of a bag to shoot that group. Uh, but after 2,000 rounds, that's pretty damn good. Uh, you're gonna be able to consistently reach out and touch targets of that size with no issue whatsoever. Granted. Uh, muzzle velocity on a rival on a rival probably isn't going to be that high considering the majority of your 1200 feet per second and lower rounds shot out of the EOS 22 barrel are going to come out subsonic no matter what. But I'll show you uh, just a bunch of different types of ammunition that I shot and, and again you can't really appreciate it on the video but I wanted to throw it in there anyway just to show you how ridiculously quiet this thing is. Uh, this is just a, a couple rounds through a, a, a few different sorts of ammunition uh, and to include if it'll, it'll mark it there'll be a little thing on the screen that'll tell you if it was subsonic to start with or not or if it's supersonic to start with or not and then I do a couple bolt hold shots that are super quiet indoors. <laughs> Man, that's quiet. <laughs> uh, I don't know what else I can say about the EOS 22 other than the fact that it's awesome. Um, there are a great deal of suppressed 22 caliber products on the market. Uh, there's also another uh, a couple, or I should say a handful of other integrally suppressed drop-in 22 barrels that you can get. But uh, for me, this is the way to go. I like this thing a lot. The the great thing about it is it's user serviceable, which is cool, and as, as it should be. Uh, and I, I can remove from the front, which is a pretty common feature. Um, but the, the weight reduction that KG was able to machine into uh, the barrel and basically tow the line between super light and giving up on sound suppression, which is not what they, what they did. They got the perfect balance, the perfect amalgamation, if you will, of weight to feature ratio in the barrel construction. So it makes it reliable as a barrel should be, accurate as a barrel should be given the barrel length that you get. And it's quiet on pretty much any type of ammunition you're going to put in it. As usual, in closing, if you are in the market for a suppressed 22, uh, this is one you should definitely consider looking at. You should probably look at this one last uh, because it's probably going to be the one that you're ended up you're going to end up buying. Uh, don't buy it on my recommendation alone. Obviously, do your own research. Uh, but if someone was to ask me, uh, "Hey, what what barrel should I get integrally suppressed for a Ruger 1022?" This is going to be the one that I recommend. Uh, it doesn't get, as far as I'm aware, any quieter than this for this configuration. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Suppress that shit accordingly.